Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to the uh, to the webinar here uh, for the Badgerline User Group. Uh, um, um, you know, today's topic is going to be what's in Creo 9. Uh, Creo 9 was uh, released uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and I think about a year ago we did Creo 8, and you know uh, it's a yearly release cycle. Um, most of you may have um, may know about TriStar and myself. I've presented in the past at Badgerline User Group events, but those who don't know. My name is Tiago Kalaniapan. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've uh, been using uh, the PTC softwares for the last uh, 25 plus years. Started in 1996 with uh, Pro Engineer 15 or 16, I forget. And uh, have been in the industry for a good part of my career and, and currently working at TriStar. I've uh, been with TriStar for about 14 years now. Uh, and uh, those who are not aware about TriStar, real quick, just uh, if I could take a minute to introduce our company. We have been in business for about 25 years. Uh, more than 25 years, I should say. Um, we are a company that helps manufacturing companies uh, adopt software systems and processes. Um, the goal being to enable, um, you know, better and more efficient product development for these companies, right? And we do that by being the largest worldwide value-added reseller. Uh, we are headquartered in Phoenix uh, in Arizona, and we do have our team spread across the United States and Canada. I'm based out of the Chicago area. Um, and uh, we do have our team in, in, you know, who uh, train our customers. We do initial implementation, fully aligned to the PD, uh, PTC product line, uh, as well as we have some custom solutions as well. So with that said, um, you know, from an agenda standpoint, I know we got about another uh, 50, 50, 55 minutes or so. Um, so what I did was I uh, wanted to focus mainly on the core usage of Creo, right? There's obviously, you know, enhancements in all areas, but I thought we should go over just the, the main day-to-day, -day, you know, usage of a, of a Creo user, like usability or sketcher, part modeling, uh, assembly, maybe 2D drawing. In fact, there is no enhancement in sheet metal at all, so that's why I didn't even list it there. Um, so going through a yearly release cycle, PTC is doing incremental changes, but still um, there are, you know, it's, it doesn't mean that only these have been enhanced. Um, to give you an idea, uh, you know, I've just listed out all the modules where they have made enhancements, right? There might be one or two here and there, right? Uh, there might be one enhancement in the weld module to allow export of XML files for robotic um, offline programming welding, for robotic welding, for example, right? Like that, they've touched, you know, pretty much many of the modules as you can see here, but for my demonstration and um, you know, take a deeper dive into the enhancements, we'll just go over uh, the, the core areas. And uh, if you have any questions uh, like Deb mentioned, feel free to start typing in the chat session and, and, and towards the end, I'm sure I can quickly uh, try my best to answer those questions. So I'll be switching between the slides and Creo. I have Creo 9 loaded and I'll try to show you some examples as well. Um, uh, just real quick, most of you may be aware, but April 20th is when PTC released Creo 9. So technically, if you are on maintenance and uh, if you know you can update your license file, or retrieve a license file, and you can install Creo 9, technically speaking, right? Of course, you got to think about um, windshield compatibility and you got to think about that. But, uh, you know, it is available starting April 20th, about two weeks ago. Um, and about a year ago, you know, I'm just giving you a a quick snapshot here from the product calendar from PTC that I took today morning, where Creo 8 was released April 2021 and Creo 7 uh, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, you know, April 2020, that's when, uh, during the peak of that time, that's when they released Creo 7. So Creo 7 has been out for two years now, and Creo 9 uh, just got released uh, about two weeks ago. As always, you know, those who, some of you or many of you may be using Windshield to manage your files, so we, we encourage you to always go to PTC site and look at the compatibility chart. So I just pulled it up this morning and it says, uh, you know, windshield 12025 is the compatible version. They also say 1.1.0, 1.2.0 and above are compatible with uh, Creo 9. Um, there's, you know, there's, they all keep updating it. So better I would encourage you to go to PTC site and look at the enhanced, you know, look at the supported um, com uh, compatibility matrix documentation, the e-support side, they have it, but I thought I should give you a quick snapshot of, you know, the, the Creo 9 compatibility if you are currently on Windshield. Okay, with that said, uh, let's get into it. Then the first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is some, some very basic UI and user experience enhancements. Um, uh, in the past, until Creo 8, um, let's say you resize your Creo window, 
and then the next window that you open, uh, it'll uh, never be the same size and now they've fixed it. If you were on full screen or not on full screen, the next time when you open, it kind of remembers it. So I, I kind of thought that was nice. And then uh, they have modernized some of the dashboards, you know, mainly in, in the manufacturing side on the NC, as well as the augmented reality AR side. And, you know, we've got a, uh, an extension called Inside Product Inside for, for sensors and for the digital thread, those type of, uh, um, uh, you know, capabilities there. We, we had dashboard before, but it was still using the old, uh, you know, dashboard there. Now they've kind of you know, grouped it in here. And you know, that's, it is, it, they've continued with the modernization of dashboards, I would say. Um, I also like this uh, new way of how they structured the, the, uh, the settings, right? And the, the Creo options, where on the right-hand side, you can see how appearance, global, core, applications, customizing. Earlier, it was all in a, in a huge list. So it's nice that they've kind of grouped it, right? That's nice. And if you have floating licenses in your company and, and you know how to you know, um, and enable or release or uh, you know, and get access or fetch that floating license, uh, now they have it under file options and floating license right up here. And if you're able to search through if you have a lot of options in there. And also the naming conventions there no longer uses those confusing uh, uh, old uh, namings for those. Um, it is coming with the new names, as you would know, right? If it's a Creo Simulation Live or Flow Analysis. Uh, in, in the past, it used to come with an actual license feature name. So that's nice for floating options, I thought. So a couple of uh, basic ones in there. And then um, uh, you can finally spin pan zoom, or I shouldn't say spin pan, it's spin using your arrow keys, right? You know, that is. Um, Possible in a specific area like the old reorient areas only, but now um, you can just hold down the shift key and you're able to rotate the model or shift plus alt. You can rotate it off of the screen center or model center. And there's a setting to control that default rotation angle. In fact, uh, let's take a quick look at this one. I got a, uh, an assembly, a motorcycle assembly open here. And, and, and yeah, normally we, we kind of spin using your, you know, most of us have 3D minds these days and that's even better. But I can hold down the shift key and, and essentially just using my, my right arrow keys at this point, left arrow keys at this point. Uh, I'm kind of using my uh, uh, you know, up arrow, down arrow in my keyboard, holding down the shift key maybe for much more precise you know, orientation could help, I, I, I think. You can control that angle. Uh, if I hold down, the, um, let's say I zoom out a bit right up here, right? And then I'm going to hold down the shift and the alt. And then if I use my, um, my, my right and arrow and left arrow, and essentially kind of like, looks like it's riding the, the motorcycle, but essentially it's now using the model center, right? I'm sorry, the screen, screen center rather than the model center, right? So if I want to use a model center, I just use a shift and then I do that. And, and then of course you still have your good old uh, view orientations and all that to go back. So, and you can control the, you know, if you go to your file options, and this is the one I was talking about where they have a little more nice streamlined way of, they've organized it better, I think, right? Compared to before, I can go to model display and there's a default rotation angle of 15 degrees. And that's what you saw me when I was um, incrementing it using my keyboard uh, keys and holding down the shift, I can control that. So uh, that's one, one uh, small enhancement on the usability side or user experience, I should say. Uh, and then um, the zoom to um, level, uh, you know, has been enhanced with a new config option. Now this is available even if you currently own Creo 7060 or 7070 or 8020 or 8, uh, 8030. Many of these configs nowadays are backported into the later maintenance release of, of 7 or 8, uh, but it's there in 9 also. So I thought of uh, just uh, quickly showing you that. It's, it's where to use Zoom to, right? When, when references fail or missing references, you know, from the reference viewer, you may want to zoom in from a large assembly. You want to zoom in specifically rather than spending your time uh, zooming in, you can just go Zoom to from the mini toolbar. That itself is not new. It's been there since Creo 4, right? The Zoom to has been there for, for some time now, but it's nice to have that config option, I thought. So uh, really quickly, if I go to uh, another model here and, and, and if I click here and there's your good old, a mini toolbar, customizable mini toolbar that we have had since Creo 4, right? Many of you know that. And if I click on it, there it goes. Now, what if I wanted that to go to a, you know, one more higher level, you're able to do that now. So if I go back to my full view or refit it, I'm able to go now and add a, a config option and just, you know, the good old config option, there's the same thing as before. Uh, and if I go and, and, and let me just do a, a search on Zoom 2, 
And there's your zoom to selected level. And from the first level, you know, it's just one set to one. I can just, let me set it to three. I'll just change it in my session right now. And I'm gonna update my config. Now I do the same thing and I do zoom too. It's going a little bit uh, you know, further in. So um, might be helpful, you know, even in, in your reference viewer, right? If you go to reference viewer, I'm sure many of you know the reference viewer, where in this reference viewer also, I can go to pick surface and I can go zoom too. That is one enhancement dated in one of the earlier releases. That's where I think it might really be handy when you have some missing reference from your reference viewer flow chart. It might kind of be very helpful. I think. So that's a, a nice little one I thought. So some of the usability is what we are seeing here. Getting into the sketcher, there are about three enhancements in sketcher, uh, pretty nice ones, I think, mainly this one. They finally got rid of the old uh, project edge and offset edge uh, uh, interface. Remember, it used to have a single chain loop, and then you got to keep saying next, next, the color changes. Now, they have streamlined it. Uh, it's, or it's more consistent to the other selection areas in Trio, right? You could, you could uh, as you can see in here, uh, they have a new, let me zoom in here, the one by one chain, you can hold down the shift key and grab the chain. You can go surface from to, you could do a tangent loop, all that you're, you know, you're used to and outside of the sketcher, right? Regular selection techniques, you use the same section, same uh, techniques, I should say, as well as you have the repeat command. So this is applicable to project and offset, right? Uh, and also uh, they're all uh, collected as one single composite curve making replace of references a lot easier and more robust for design changes, you know? So, so what I mean by that is maybe I'll uh, just quickly show with an example. It's better understood with an example as always. Um, so let me, I got a, a very simple model here. And, and normally, you know, when you, when you do any type of, uh, uh, you know, projection in Creo, right? Maybe I wanna project these edges or what have you, uh, what, what would you do, right? You go to your sketching plan, you do your sketch and there's your good old, uh, project and offset and thick and all those are good practices, right? You're establishing parent-child relationship and generally a good practice, right? If you want that design intent to be that where it's driven off of another existing edge, that's a good practice. But sometimes it could also be a bad practice where you project it and then you don't want that external reference, especially in assembly mode, and you may just break it, you know, afterwards by removing that reference. Regardless of how you do it, you know, right now if you do project, you get this new, um, you know, a toolbar, floating toolbar, uh, and it's telling you, right? You can use shift, you can use hold control key, and it's very similar to your regular selections. Before I show you that, actually, you know, those many of you may be familiar with it, but what if I, in, in Creo generally, you know, if I, if I go to uh, one of the edges and how do I get the chain of edges? That's something that's been there since the, the, the Pro Engineer, you know, even the while for an early Creo releases, right? You can hold down the shift key and there comes the surface loop, right? Can hold down the shift key, go here, and you can get tangent. You know, let me just move the zoom window up here. Hey, there it is. Okay. Um, if I, uh, yeah. Okay. Just something happened to my screen here. Can you all still see my screen? To my, to my. Uh, uh, there it is. Okay. I don't know. For some reason, the. Okay. The zoom window came up and went away. So I hope you can still see my screen and everything. But. So uh, I can just grab one edge, but then I can pull down the shift key. And as you know, right, you can just do your uh, right click to do your surface and holding down the shift key and right click to get the loop from to, or maybe I want to go from here and go only up to here, right? Or I can do the right click and get the other side. Same techniques, right, that you use in surfacing, right? You hold slip the seed, for example, shift, grab this, you get the seed boundary. Same technique you could use when you do your uh, sketching now, right? Very similar, right? Pro project edge, for example, like you say, okay, don't show this again, for example. But when I grab my edges in here, I could go hold down the shift key and I could say, get me that chain, there it is, right? I could continue repeating it. I can go repeat this. I could say, okay, maybe I wanna go project and I can keep repeating it, add additional ones in here. And I could say, this is the chain I want. I'm just putting down the shift key to get it, right? So that's one way to do it. Or maybe let's say I want to do a quick, uh, I want to do like a quick, uh, we'll just do some, some extrudes in here real quick. And maybe I want to reference it off of this geometry, another body is what I'm going to create here. And, and um, this is offset, the plane is a little bit offset. So you could use it for projector offset, by the way. But when I do the project, there comes your little floating toolbar here waiting for me to pick items in here. So I can go grab like control select like before, right? Multiple ones, but I no longer get that little single chain and, and, and loop option, right? That's the best part about it, right? 
Uh, I'm able to select uh, however I want. Uh, maybe I can I can get the loop in here, for example, or I don't want that. I'm not yet accepted. I'm just trying out things at this point. I want to get that loop right here using the shift key. Uh, I got it done. I can continue repeating it, or I, you know, so I, I can say, let's go repeat another one in here and say, okay, let's do the loop of that one too. Um, and, and, and middle click and I'm out of it, right? So, so maybe I do something like that. And maybe I, the reason I'm probably going to do that is maybe I want to extrude this guy up to that face maybe, but maybe I want to uh, put in a, uh, you know, a contribute that feature to a different body. In Creo 7, they introduced multi-body. So I'm going to add a, I have a gusset body that I'm going to contribute it to. And there it is, right? And I'm maybe even make it transparent. So right now it's the whole is referencing that. And, you know, it's a, it's a same uh, part, but two bodies in here. Maybe um, I have an existing a feature that I probably wanted to redefine. And let's say if we're going to go to the sketch real quick, I do have this, this uh, offset uh, edge, right? So just to show you that it also works for offset edges, I could go into the offset edge, just similar to your project edge, you have your offset edge, you get the same interface. So the interface is different or it's better now, I would say, right? The way you select items. So I could go select one item, shift and get that, wait for it to tell the surface loop. And of course, I can just go use my dragger to, you know, the old flip arrow, you get a flip arrow and go to type a negative value and all that is gone, right? It's a lot more intuitive. I, I like how it's a lot more intuitive than it used to be before. And I can continue repeating. That's a nice thing, whereas especially when you have situations like this, where you keep doing the middle click and, and, and I, I'm just selecting additional loops in here, as you can see, right? Um, I middle click on it. I select one, I hold on the shift key and I keep adding as many as I want, right? So and, and one nice thing about all this is as I'm doing this, if I go hover over any one of them, as you can see, it's a composite curve. So all these are like composite curves. That's a nice thing from a referencing standpoint. I could just delete them for now. Or if I go to my, uh, let's say, add a couple more here, right? You know, offset edge, I'll just try to add maybe uh, this one here. And maybe I want to go only to here, right? I, I just go right click, right click to my... Uh, to it's like a from to chain, right? I'm, I'm just holding on the shift and doing that. And maybe I want to give it a, a specific distance outside. I want to maintain that offset there. Um, some of you may not prefer the shift key and what you could do technically is, you know, you could, let's say I don't want to do it that way. Can I just go offset one? And then I'd like to use the old uh, details tab. There's a little, uh, you may prefer the dialog box instead. That's still there, right? You have your chain you and go to your rule-based uh, one, right? They have a, uh, you can go to rule based uh, option here, and again, I think, um, sometimes, yeah, rule based. And I can go to my uh, partial loop, for example, and I could say that's my partial loop, and I can flip this direction there, as you can see. So those options are available, you know. So, but the shift key options is a little more quicker, I think, right? When you do uh, when you do offset edge and 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 say, okay, I want to go to the entire loop. There it goes, right? Uh, and and then I go to my references. That's the best thing, right? They're all listed as complete loops, as you can see here, right? I have the, each one is showing up as a loop. Um, uh, let's see here, right here for the references, there's a complete loop, complete loop, there's a loop of uh, each one. Maybe I wanna go replace one of these loops. I don't want this loop. Instead of that, I'd like to replace it, right? You still have your replace reference. And I could say, I wanna replace, and it pops up and I wanna replace it with this, with another loop in there. And, and what's happening at this point is I've essentially manage to remove this instead, replace it in here. So um, it's not just for usability, but I also see some, some advantages in doing this way where it's, use, it's using one single loop rather than multiple edge IDs, right? Kind of like an intent chain almost, right? So, um, and you can also make changes using your uh, edit references, just like before, if I go to edit references, maybe here, I, I actually wanted it to follow this uh, geometry rather than the whole, I could go to my edit reference and look at that, even though there's one single edge and then we pick the loop, I could say, okay, instead use this. And if I do a preview, say I quickly switched from the whole to this one, right? There it goes, right? And so if I go to my uh, gusset and if I say, you know, uh, so I'm able to add that. In fact, I can always go add new ones anytime, right? I can go to my sketch view and I could always say, okay, project edge. And I could say, I wanna project this and add more. But um, the nice thing is a reference. That's the best thing I like, where since it's a complete loop, when you replace here or replace outside in the feature, it's very, very helpful actually, right? So let me just do this, uh, just get out of that one. 
So that's a, I thought it's a, it's, a, it's a good enhancement. That's one of the biggest ones in Sketch for actually, right? The project and the offset are modernized and a lot more stable from a reference handling standpoint. And then this is a good one. Uh, I mean, it's a, a long requested, uh, uh, I mean, for several customers have requested this for a long time. Finally, it auto scales the first sketch you do, right? Let's say you have not created any geometry whatsoever. This is your first sketch. Remember the datum planes are like 500 by 500 and I know there are config options to change that. However, the, the first sketch that you do will auto scale and there's a config option to control it. Um, depending on which, you know, when you have all the weak dimensions and not modified it, you just change one of them and it'll scale it. So, so just to take a quick look at that one, if I go into uh, a new part, for example, and let's say I want to do just do a, you know, um, just a, a, a simple sketch is what I'm after here. And uh, it, it could be in 3D, 2D, doesn't matter, but you know, depending on the config, but as I'm sketching this profile, right, as I, let's just do some, some, some odd profile here, I'll just do uh, some shape. Um, I would have done that as a chamfer, by the way, but let's say I did this, right? I did this and there all your weak dimensions. You see the 492 and 265, 200, right? Uh, now with Creo 9, I just changed that 492 to one, for example, right? And you see how it has auto scaled everything. 1.4, it kept the same shape. Unlike before, remember you couldn't, I mean, the workaround before was you had to collect all the dimensions, go to your little modify, and then do the little lock scale. The good old lock scale is still there, right? <laughs> They're not removed it. By the way, this is only for the first sketch, remember, right? It's not for the, the next sketch. And you know, now you've established your size, it doesn't do it, but it's nice, a nice little enhancement, I thought. Um, it's, it was, uh, should have been done a lot earlier than I, uh, but finally, you know, at least uh, it's there, at least in Creo 9. And then um, one other uh, nice thing in, in, in sketches is when you do complex sketches or even simple sketches, there are times where you accidentally reuse an edge twice or you have an overlapping geometry. It was there before, but the, the overlapping uh, geometry will, will never stay highlighted for a long time, right? It used to, when you click on it, and see if it's anything highlighting, then it'll show up and then it goes away. Now it stays. Also, they introduced a couple of additional inspection tools like T-junctions and intersections. I think that's pretty nice where, what, you know, is it an intersection or is it a junction? You're able to, you know, uh, you know uh, control the display of that in a complex sketch in the sketch environment. Maybe, you know, just to go through that feature requirements uh, ability that they've had for some time now, like shape closed loop as well, or all that we see, right? Usually we wanna make sure it's fully closed, but you are able to also look at these additional things and there are config options for all of that, right? So if I do uh, just a, a quick one here, if I were to, maybe I could just show with, uh, with another example here. If I open up uh, maybe a, a, an old demo model that I usually use for sketching regions, but I'm, I'm gonna go redefine this, uh, just uh, turn off the dimensions and constraints for now. Um, they have this um, this um, uh, intersections, highlight intersection, highlight junctions, right? You can also go up here and can access, but I would just enable it up here itself, right? And uh, I could say, you know, maybe I want to um, turn off everything. Shape, closed loop, and highlight open ends are always turned on. But this um, highlight overlap, right? If I had an overlap before, like, you know, let's say I had a line on top of a line or reuse the edge, one more time or something. When I click on this and say highlight overlap, you know, it'll show it, but then it'll go away or now it stays there. It's a lot more stable. That's one enhancement. And then if you want to see any type of uh, uh, junctions in there, or, you know, there it is, the user kind of junctions, or what about intersection points? Maybe I could just go at, uh, let's see if I could uh, add a, a line or something real quick here. Um, so that there, I know that I should, if I turn on my intersections, you know, there's my just kind of highlighting only the intersections in there. Now that we have, you know, uh, in Creo 5, they just introduced sketch regions right up here, right? Sketch regions. You technically no longer have to trim, but as a good practice, we don't, you know, you want to make sure it's a, from a modeling uh, best practice standpoint, we want to make sure it's close, but you are, it's in spite of all that, that you can still create, you know, you can still establish uh, your closed uh, profile by using sketch regions, right? That's been there since Creo 5, most of you may know, but I thought it's a, it's a nice little uh, uh, tool of uh, inspection tools. And so that's it for Sketcher, right? Really three three improvements here, project offset, auto scale, and uh, so on the basic sketching side, inspection tools in here.
Now, on the core modeling side, one of the biggest ones that PTC worked on, it's one of the big projects they worked on, it looks like, is divide surface. Um, now, uh, I have my, myself being a simulation user, I, I used to use Pro Mechanica and Creo Simulate during my industry days. We used to have uh, something called surface region inside of Simulate that allowed us to, to create or break a natural surface into regions where I could apply localized loads or constraints, right? Um, and, and now they have enabled it, or you know, they've created a new feature called divide surface that essentially does the same thing that used to be in simulate, but now you're able to do it outside in the park modeling environment there, right? So I can go to sketch base or chain base, meaning I can uh, create my own sketch for establishing the contact area maybe, or, or maybe, you know, there's several use cases, right? I could use it for basic park modeling or shelling. I could use it to create, you know, emboss or engravings like these. It's a lot easier than before. And generally in MBD, right? If you look at semantic referencing, whether it's going to go to a CMM or in the manufacturing side or for downstream use, right? When you export it as a step, a file or, or another software manufacturing or inspection software, where to look at your GTALs or notes, it'll be nice to you know, use this to quickly create regions and apply different appearances. It could even be for aesthetics, for example, blank textures, things like that. So there's divide and there's unify. Um, unify essentially you know, allows you to unify divided surfaces in case you want to select them in one, uh, one go, for example, that, that's, uh, that's what it does. It also sometimes works on imported geometry. But let's take another you know, more examples. You see, it'll be better. There's uh, several use cases for this. So let's see if I can uh, open up uh, one of my uh, models here. We'll just uh, open up a different design for that. So let's say I want to go and um, uh, you know, create some uh, surface regions in here. So like I said earlier, we used to have to go to uh, simulate and then there was a surface region. But now in the modeling mode, they have this uh, uh, divide surface. You know, they used to have this split surface command before that's more for contour based, uh, you know, uh, division, right? You know, if it naturally has multiple surfaces, but now you want to uh, use a contour to break it, but this divide surface can use a sketch or a projected sketch or a wrap sketch, it's pretty powerful. So let me show you if I want to go do a, a, a quick sketch or something like, you know, let's say I want to do some, something like that. Um, and, and I can go and, and do the divide surface up here, right? Divide. Uh, and then I can say divide the surface and, and there it goes, right? And of course I can control select multiple geometries and all that, and it's essentially dividing that surface, right? Um, or let me just for now leave it uh, only for this surface. Now, what is this, this orange preview telling me that that's the new ID, there'll be two IDs now, and you can control uh, where does that new ID gets created on this side or on this side right here, right? So I can just go and say, this is important from a referencing standpoint, right? You want to, it's creating two IDs, but uh, you know, where do you want to create new IDs is the point here. That it is going to apply a different color for it, appearances, texture, things like that. Uh, maybe uh, you can also use uh, external sketches. I just sketched it real quick, but let me unhide. I have an external sketch in here. And maybe I can even use my uh, sketch region, right? I should be able to just go ahead and, and, and create, use my sketch region and say, okay, there it is, right? Mini toolbar, you get divide surface, right? I can do divide surface. Um, and, and as with the surfaces, I could go pick this, I could go control, pick additional surfaces, for example, right, and so on, for example, right. Um, and and why, what would what would be a use case in here, right? Why would I create something like this? Maybe uh, I want to go, let me hide my sketch first. Uh, I want to apply a different color, that's one thing, or uh, I could also go to my annotate from an MBD, from a you know, model-based definition standpoint, I could start establishing, you know, creating some, some notes in here, for example, uh, let's say I want to add a leader note or something up here. And, and, uh, and, and let's say I want to put it something like, okay, this is, uh, right, so there it is, right? Oh, okay, so it could be where the fixtures being held or what have you, or maybe to make some controlled measurements. So, uh, and, and the nice thing is now that it's, uh, let me turn on my 3D nodes, it went away. I should be able to select, uh, going back to my geometry here, I should be able to select that and go to references and I can add it as a semantic reference, right? I can go to surface sets and I should be able to see that's, that, that can be picked as an intent surface. I can also pick this as an intent surface there, there it goes, right? 
So now I know when I look at do a semantic query for from an MBD standpoint, this could go to a CMM or a, or and for inspection or, or for other in other softwares or in a step file. You're able to uh, access those, you know, as an AP two four two. You're able to access those those geometries that it's referencing to, for example. Right. So just just one use case there. Uh, and, and your sketch could be open too, right? It need not be closed. For example, I could technically have an open sketch like this, right? It's just a straight line going through the model, right? Uh, the bottom side of the model. And I should be able to just use that as my split surface. And I could just go use my you know, loop surfaces, right? We use it for drafts. You put the top, you hold on the shift and then grab the edge. As you can see, it, it grabbed all the side surfaces there. And of course I can go flip my uh, uh, you know, flip the divided side as to where you want to establish a new surface ID, right? Again, this could be, you know, maybe um, this is where I, I you know, there's going to be some you know, verification and you know, a process requirement. Maybe I'm going to add some notes to it or maybe adding some texture to it, what have you. Or even in FEA, I could use it, right, for, for applying some constraints, for example. So there are several use cases like that. In fact, that uh, for, you know, some some of you may have known there's a workaround to do emboss features, you know, back in Creo 7 or Creo 8 and prior, even in the old wildfires, the way we had to do like an emboss feature on a curved geometry, it, it was doable, but you had to do, you know, quite a bit of work, right? You had to essentially go to your offset feature, right? And I'll show you the, the old method and then you'll see how quick it is now. You had to do the offset and then you had to go to the, the bit draft or where's that with draft. And, and essentially had to maybe either create a plane, for example, or let's say you had to literally um, sketch a new profile, right? You have to go and say, let's do a, some circular option here. Maybe I just, it gets predicted onto it. And then, you know, I can, I'm creating an offset with the draft and all that good stuff, right? That's kind of how emboss feature was to you, was used and you can still use it that way. You know, that's still there. However, a big problem with this is Instead of the circle or simple shapes, what about the text? The text is always grayed out, right? An internal sketch. We can do a text like the part number or material name or what have you. So now, so back in the days, the workaround was, you know, again, I had to. Um, it, it is really a quite a quite a work, quite some work. You know, you can get it done, but you know, it was like you had to to get to that sketch first. You had to do it on a plane, uh, right? Like this, and then you do your. Um, let me just go uh, unhide this guy here. And then literally I had to go do the, the offset and then say, let's say the draft, for example. And when I create my new sketch uh, on that plane, um, since I couldn't um, sketch it, I had to do a separate one, you know, uh, a, a part, and then do a project edge and I'll have to use, you know, now I know I can go with the shift and, and all that, right? I could go now that we, we, we have the new, um, uh, what is it, the, the full loop selection. Uh, missed that one, I think. Um, and, and if I go to project edge and, and, and grab that one, um, and, and I can keep doing this, right? And, and, and there it is, uh, whoops, uh, I think got the wrong one there, there it is. And I could keep doing project edge and I had to pick this and then say, okay, let, let's just go with the, um, uh, with the full loop, uh, right? And I had to do all this work and then do the emboss. But nowadays, now with, with the new um, a split or light surface feature, all you have to do is, you have your sketch done, right? You, you go to that, that sketch that I just did here. I should be able to simply do a split, either wrap it first, right? And then split it, or I can simply say, I wanna split it on this curved surface and, and that's it, right? And, and uh, it, it, it is doing the, the split surface there. And what is the advantage now? I can select that surface and I could maybe you know, apply a color, for example, or even go to flexible modeling, right? For example, and use the offset, which is more powerful than the regular offset. And it's a geometry offset now, right? I can establish a, let's say here, a specific offset in there in either direction there. Uh, there it is, right? So a little more easier to do, right? I mean, rather than the cumbersome way of, you know, reusing that external edges, projecting it and all that. So, um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of use cases uh, when, when it comes to track modeling because it's a big project they worked on. In fact, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this example, I also have a, another body. As so imagine, let's say I got, got out of all of these tools. I don't need uh, all the ones that I did. There's also a way to, let me just, um, uh, you know, there's also a way to get the intersect curve. Many of you may have used the intersect option, right? I've got two bodies here. Let's say, let's say a fixture body and the main body is what I have here. And I could technically have, um, create an intersect 
between, for example, I'm collecting this body and I'm also collecting the, the, the yellow picture body that I have here. And, and there it is, it has created the curve, right? You know, so if I go to my annotate, I have two of those uh, notes that I did create a fail. So I'm going to remove that 3D note that we added. There it is. And now if I go to my, um, uh, to my bodies and hide the fixture body right there, um, these, these curves, these, these uh, composite curves, or I should say intersect curves, I could use them as one single feature. And then I could say, I want you to split that um, entire body and there it goes, right? I'm gonna go flip the, um, the direction for the IDs and there it is, right? So now I should be able to select these as, a, an, as an intense surface, right? I could just go to any, any of them right here and then there it is, intense surface. Maybe I apply a, I don't, I don't know, a like different color uh, or maybe this is where I'm gonna add, use it for MDD, for example, right? So, uh, you know, the divide surface is, is quite powerful there and you can even use it for aesthetics, you know, like I said earlier, you know, there's a, Quite a few examples um, in, in there that I that I have here, but we'll just uh, keep going. Just to show you a couple more. There are situations where you have that whole, uh, you know, that's still the case, right? Two halves of the whole. It's still the case. You cannot unify them. Uh, however, when would you use a unified tool? Maybe uh, something like, you know, if I had, uh, let's say, I want to go and uh, unhide uh, this geometry, and I do have, um, I'm going to go to my sketch region, for example, right? And I want to go. Um, select some of these sketch regions in here, and maybe I want to do again the, the split on these two surfaces. Now, remember, I've, I've projected it, and it projects it, and it creates a split, or it has two separate surfaces. So now if I go to, uh, if, I, if I hide this uh, surface now, on the surface, from a surface ID standpoint, if I go back to geometry, uh, it is, this is one surface ID, these three are three surface IDs. Right, I mean, these are one and this is another one because there is a break in between there. Now, this is where I could use a unify, right? I could go to say unify, this is a target surface and I want you to include that. So during the divide, it so happened that due to the natural division of the surface, I could just say unify them. And now I could just go and say, okay, maybe I wanna uh, have a specific color there, right? For example, right? I can, uh, I can keep projecting additional uh, curves. For example, I could just go and say, for example, uh, uh, something like this, maybe I wanted to go split this on these two, right? Um, there it is. Um, and again, the same thing I could do here too, right? I could just go, you see there are two separate uh, surfaces. I could go unify them. So those are some use cases for unify where now I have it as one single surface where I could, uh, you know, essentially apply a different color, for example. Right? I could just go apply a different color that could be selected. I could still do the, you know, I could say, okay, these are going to be, for example, uh, green in color. I'm just giving a green, yellow, red type, like a, like a meter reading type of a geometry here. But this one, again, we have a problem. See, it's one single surface. I could right now say that, you know, this is where, how do you break this one into two? You could use the old, uh, this has been there for a long time, right? They're calling it separate surface region, right? I could go separate surface region and I could select that in the contour could be this one, could also be this one here. So now I just use the contour and now it is two surface IDs and, and, and hopefully I can now get, get into like a, let's say I wanna go into the, the yellow one here or maybe I wanna put in like a, uh, I don't know, the red color there, et cetera, right? So it's just, just an example. I mean, there are more such examples there, but you get the idea there's several, even in sheet metal mode, we could use it uh, in FEA, you know, pre simulate you could use it. Um, you know, for even creating shells, right? Quickly to remove geometry, could use it. So basic part modeling for MBD, there's a lot of, it's one of the biggest ones that happened in Creo 9.0, uh, divide and unify services, okay? Um, and a few other, you know, smaller enhancements, but still it's pretty good, I think. You could see the number of seconds between Creo 8 and 9. I have a screenshot of how long it took for a geometry pattern with a fill option, right? But the reason for that is in until Creo 8 for geometry pattern, the identical option was not available. The general or variable takes more time as you know, right? So, so now you can, you know, if I, if I open up a, a model here real quick, uh, there is a way to, if I, you know, first of all, those who, I'm sure most of you may know geometry pattern, but uh, the whole point of geometry pattern is, you know, you, 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 are, you are selecting uh, features, let's say as, as a geometry, right? Not the features, but, you're just picking the geometry, 
and not the feature definition, and then you could do a pattern. This has been there since quite a few releases now, right? It's nothing new. Uh, but it, the main reason, it's main and reason we encourage you to do geometry pattern is for complex models, it's faster, right? Performance wise. But even that uses some, takes some time, right? You know, let's say I want to do a, um, a, 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 a direction pattern here and, and come up with several of them. In a very long, complex pattern, right? It, it might take take a while even for a geometry pattern. I'll show you with a better another example. Now with with uh, that's you know in Creo 9.0, uh, what you could do is uh, let's see if I could open up a uh, let's see here. Oh, there it is. Um, if I could, uh, you know, want to do a geometry pattern from a group, right? I could even select the group itself, or multiple features, for example, and then I could do a geometry pattern. And when I do that, it's almost working like a copy geom. It's just picking the surfaces. That's why the lightweight and faster regeneration, right? And I could use uh, the fill, right? Um, I'm going to fill it to that sketch and maybe uh, give it a, a picture. Let's see here. That's a lot of them. This is where it, you know, sometimes you just wait for it, it crashes or things like that. So now you go to your options. Uh, there is identical finally. As you all know, identical is the fastest way, right? You know, uh, identical is the fastest one and it is pretty quick. And if you had done the same thing in, in Creo 8 and prior, it, it takes, you know, close to a minute sometimes. And, and, and that's kind of what you see in the screenshot here. So that's a nice one. Um, some of these, I'll, I'll just quickly run through the slides. I know we got about another 10 minutes or so. Um, the core modeling improve, uh, you know, the, the rounds uh, are improved, especially fading away rounds like these. When you do a surface to surface round, it's a lot more stable, I'd say, compared to before. You know, before it was not that stable, uh, especially when you want the round to end on a tangent edge. We had to do all that surfacing and, you know, tweet, you know, the, the, the replays and all that before surfacing, but it's going to be a little bit better with surface to surface round. Um, and then, you know, whenever you suppress, a feature and you know the children, right? It has to be suppressed or suspended or fixed or, you know, you get a similar dialog box like before, but I, I see how you have immediate access to suppress and suspend highlighting all the features. That's nice to see, right? Compared to before where you had to go, there's like a couple of menus here, edit, you had to, you know, have a huge list. You had to essentially click control A and go there. So I like how they have the, the quicker access now compared to before. So if I go to my, uh, uh, the old part, you know, the, the one where I showed you some of these examples, if I'm going to go suppress some feature, this is the new uh, you know, children handling dialog box you get, right? Suppress or suspend all. If I go to details, I get quick access right up here, right? I'm able to suppress or suspend all, or uh, that's nice, right? Either, you know, especially had a lot of them before you had to go to the edit and just, you know, drop down menu and all that. So I think that's a nice little uh, enhancement, I thought. Um, and then... Uh, there's a couple of configs. I mean, um, you know, the help file is all the miscellaneous new configs they've added. Some, some of the customers wanted a config to control the default standard clearance hole should be a close fit, medium fit, or a free fit, right? You can control that now. Um, and same thing with the notes, right? Um, do you want it to automatically update or reset or manually you hit reset? You know, some customers wanted it, not so. I think all these are community ideas of PTC starting to add is what I'm thinking. Um, and then some selection techniques in here, especially those who use bodies, multi-bodies. Um, starting Creo 7 and 8, as you know, PTC introduced uh, 7, you know, multi-body, right? Boolean addition, subtraction. What you could do uh, now is, you know, at least until 8.0, when you pick a surface, it'll always do an edit definition of the merge feature because it's thinking this body and this body was merged. Yes, it is. Even now it's merged, but now they have, they know that when you pick the surface, it could go to the round used to create the feature rather than the merge. You, know, you always hold the alt key and get to that level. So better visibility on parent-child relationships uh, with the tree. They're calling it a select related tree in such situations when you use surfaces and um, you know, quilts and bodies. It's nice to see a quick snapshot of the feature that I'm looking at and the direct parents and the children. You still have your reference viewer, but it's nice uh, you have that. It can, it can be pinned, it can be docked. You know, that's a, that's a new one in there. In fact, uh, if I could uh, quickly uh, show one of those, I could go to any of these geometries now and I can go look at, uh, in fact, this may not be a, a good model to show that. 
I will see if I can open up a, a better model for that. If I go to, let's see here. Um, I got a, a multi-body design here where I've used some um, uh, bodies in here. So if I go to my model tree, it's a lot better now, right? It's a little more uh, easier to see and better, you know, design tree. There's your design tree that uh, that was there even in you know, eight. Um, but here I have multiple bodies, as you can see here, right? Multiple bodies were created. and. I select the surface of a geometry and I'm able to go just like before the select from parents that's still there, but this can be pinned. Um, and you see how it, it, it comes up in your, um, it, it can be independent or, you know, you can kind of drag it out or, you know, you can, you can also pull it out as you can see here. And it varies depending on the surface you pick. If I pick this surface, it's nice. It gives you the direct parents, the current geometry. So better, a uh, quick snapshot of, of, um, of the parent-child relationship here. If you want to take a deeper dive, you, of course, you do your usual right-click info, reference viewer, things like that. But I like how they have that new select. And you can dock it up here and, and you, know, you can, whatever you pick, right? Any geometry you pick, as you can see, it keeps changing to it, right? I can pick another feature. So that is a current feature. Um, you know, uh, do you want to show like system references that are topologically getting affected? Are not right. It has a better view. Um, you know, overall the model tree is improved. You know, um, especially when you use soft surfaces and bodies, it's really helpful. I think so. Um, and there are some, you know, modernized, I should say, tree filter. Uh, there's a tree filter, and it kind of comes up like in a nice little uh, dialog box here compared to that big one earlier. Right, you click on each option, and then you get to see what you want to filter out. It's not new, but they just kind of made it a little bit better. I think it almost looks like a small toolbar. The different options, um, several tree options now, right? I mean, they have the the model tree and design tree, which was there in Creo Eight itself. They just allowed, uh, you know, adding any feature to the custom group now, right? It need not be just quills. It could be datum planes, other features. You can just drag and drop. So overall, uh, looking at a design that is done with quilts and bodies, um, you're able to have a better functional organization using the design tree, right? Which was there before. They just uh, have improved it in nine compared to eight. And then a quilt body evolution tree. Uh, like I said, if you have geometries of a surface model and, and it's sometimes very difficult to see how they got to that geometry, right? It's uh, quite easy now where you're simply able to, um, you know, look at the, the, uh, the quilt body evolution tree. That's a new tree that will just display bodies and quilts. That's it, right? And you're able to click on each one of them or the quill specifically and to give you a snapshot of how it was created. Very, very powerful, uh, I think. And it could be used in a, in a lot of use cases, I'm thinking, especially when you have uh, surface models. And if I go up here, right, I, I know this model looks pretty straightforward and simple at this point. Let's say I'm going to hide all my trees. I just have your good old school uh, model tree. But um, as, I'm, as I'm selecting this geometry, you know, this may have been made with some quilts and bodies i have no idea so at that time you know now you have this new quilt body evolution tree as you can see here and what that allows you to do is when you pick on a surface um off that extrude it's part of that quilt and they have the snapshot enabled automatically so now it it doesn't show the bodies or the quilts in here it shows up here right and i can do my regular insert mode and it's a little a better way to see how this geometry evolved right I see it's merged, but what is this one? Okay, they did that first, and then how was this done? And they have this quilt. So it's nice to see the evolution of it rather than in the typical long model tree. It's very difficult to decipher it sometimes unless you are a surfacing guru and you know whoever did that. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot cleaner, uh, better organization overall, I think, uh, with, with uh, surface designs. Uh, um, this is, yeah, but I've got like, 12.50, so we've got five minutes left. Does any, I don't see any questions in the chat, but does anybody want a yeah. clarification on anything that has been presented? Otherwise, um, probably your last yeah. chance to ask a question here. I've got a quick question about yeah. the um, divide surface. Yeah. Can you go back to that model real quick? Yeah. Can, sure. you, can you draft those divided surfaces independently? Draft, uh, no, uh, no, it's not a, it's tech, yeah, it's still, it's a, I'll get to that model real quick. I see that's a good question. I, you're talking about, if I go to, um, uh, let's say I, I, you're talking about the first, uh, one of the divide surface I did, 
Yeah, right. can, you can you draft, draft this right green there? Section I mean, independently? Uh, if I go to draft, it's picking that as a surface in there. And if I pick the pick the hinge in there, it seems to be, uh, let me see if it's picking, it seems to be picking the entire one though, right? As you can yeah. see, it seems to be okay. that was your question. So, no. right. um, uh, so it's the, just the ID there. I see what you mean, right? It's technically not, um, yeah, because it picks as an individual surface. I'm thinking if I say don't propagate, let's try that. I know there's a propagate option. That might be it, right? Because default is to propagate all, right? I just removed it and hopefully this is kind of... Yeah, it's not previewing. I bet you hit okay, it fails. Yeah, it might fail. Most likely it's going to fail, I think, because I don't think it's... It's it's mainly for appearances for... for uh, I've used it. Uh, I've tried it on shells, right? It seems to be working fine on shells where you can remove... Uh, that surface is selectable for remove surface, but for drafts, um, you'll have to still use the old uh, surface tangent. I mean, there's a, I believe in uh, there's an, an old option where you can deform the surface, but uh, I remember the old uh, feature there, blend tangent to surface, right? That is the one, but yeah, it's uh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Keep usually when I have to do it, I gotta split them up by a small amount. Yeah, right. Give like it with and then, yeah, you know, even yeah. see before we had this, right? Many of our customers for FEA, right? If not mechanical or in other softwares, I've seen they had a small thickness, but I think this gives you a lot of you know options to 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 control that surface, mainly on MBD and appearance. That's it's uh, really quick, easy. I think in, in the past, you know, I'll I'll go to what is it? Uh, I believe uh, where is that uh, the body in here? Let, let me just go delete one of the. The bodies here, I had a separate body to allow me to go to simulate. I would go to simulate, right, in, in Mechanica or simulate. And then instead of simulate, I would go to refine model. And there I would do divide surface and volume region. This has been there for like, you know, close to, I would say, 20 years now. Yeah. The thing is, as soon as you're done with it, uh, let's say you do a divide surface here. When you get out of um, a simulate, it's gone, right? And, and the yeah. modeling side is not available. That is the issue, right? So I think they really work on it. Uh, yeah, good question. Any other uh, questions in the chat session? I don't know. Let me just see if that's, um, um, let's see here. Yeah, that was one big, uh, maybe uh, I know in a couple of minutes, I can uh, run through a couple of slides and wrap up in two minutes. Deb, is that okay? Um, sure. Yeah, but I think I'm almost, yeah, there's uh, just a couple more things, you know, geodesic curves and and assemblies are not a whole lot. You know, I can, um, you know, with CRC, right? If you have a circular reference, they have a quick way to access it, right? Before you had to go to info reference viewer, look at the circular path. So in the notification center, they have a little, uh, you know, icon for it. Um, you can finally group um, uh, offset lines, you know, the exploded lines. If you do exploded states before we couldn't group them, uh, you know, it does a long tree. And sometimes you may have had features done after that. And now you can just, you know, instead of scrolling through it, you can just group the offset lines coming up in your model tree in assembly mode. So it's just minor enhancements here. Um, you are able to replace a part with an assembly that contains the same part. It was interesting they didn't allow that before without the features, without the references failing. So now I could replace a part when I do replace assembly containing that same model, right? Maybe it's a fastener or a bolt, and then I had a bolt assembly there, and I want to replace with, with some more additional components with the same part in there. That's now allowed. Um, and if you had a, I mean, if you don't use windshield and you rename some components and it fails, now you can go select a part that is of, not of the same name. It kind of give you a warning, but if it's the same, you renamed it, but you're able to go select it and it will reestablish that reference. So that's kind of neat for our customers that work with file folders, I think. Um, and then- There uh, is one question in the chat yeah. now. Okay, well, let me see. Uh, let's see if I can, uh, look at, can you please read that, Deb? I don't know if I'm not able to access my chat. Yeah, just a sec. Oh, let's see. Oh. So this, can you unify, can you unify two halves? Two halves of a cylinder. Of a cylinder. Ah, that's a good question, uh, Daniel, yeah. Uh, I would say yes and no, I mean, um, the natural holes, right, where you have a shaft or a hole, and for programming purposes, as you know, PTC uh, always has had it as two halves. And it's still the same way, unfortunately, like you saw, you saw me demo in that, in that meter example. Uh, I cannot simply go pick those and unify. So technically, the unify works only on surfaces that have been divided. So let's say inside the hole, you had done, I don't know, let's say you want to show 
a different texture for the, for the threaded whole area, then you can combine it. But by default, no, two halves, the answer is no, right? It cannot be uh, combined as of yet. I know that is a, a question asked to PTC when they were showing us to, and, and um, hopefully uh, that's, I think they still have some legacy, uh, I don't know, internal programming on the geometry side where an arc or a circle is technically broken to two halves behind the scenes. And uh, one thing you could do is you could establish your own, uh, you could break your own, uh, create your own halves. That's an option. You know, the unify may not be possible, but what I meant is maybe I, if I could uh, quickly show uh, maybe uh, something like this, right? You know, it's usually pure, uh, you know, it depends, right? You know, are we getting a break here or not? Uh, you're not able to combine it. However, you could, let's say for a profile tolerance from a GDNT standpoint, I probably want to split this into two. That's possible, right? But not the other way around. I could just go and say, I want to split this and, and uh, let's say I would do a sketch on, uh, on the bottom here. Maybe we'll just throw in a line or something here real quick. Shouldn't take much time. Um, and then I'm going to say split this. So that works um, right in here. And if it's, if it's somebody divided it using our divide geometry, then you're able to go unify. That'll work but not on a natural sea like these two holes in here, right? This PTC, I mean, for forever since I've known the last you know, several years, it's always that way, right? It's broken. Those two, I couldn't select them and hit unify. That'll be nice. You know, that's the first thing. In fact, I, I tried when they introduced unify, but unfortunately it's not there. You could go and establish your own little a um, uh, little break and then kind of unify, but uh, the natural ones cannot be unified question. Uh, I think we're almost on uh, out of time here, but uh, any other questions uh, before you wrap up here? Um... Yeah, thank you. Um, feel free to ask one more question, anybody. Otherwise, we'll um, end, the end the meeting and the recording, and hopefully uh, I'll post the recording to uh, LinkedIn group, Facebook group, and our website. So one more question, if anybody's got one. Otherwise, Thanks so much, Tiago uh, and TriStar for your all your time and great, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend. Thanks.